Hi guys, today I thought I'd talk to you about audio interfaces. Using one as a sound card, and I'd also show you the Focusrite Scarlett Solo and the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Um, and I thought I'd explain to you a little bit about why I've decided to use an audio interface instead of a, the onboard sound on my computer or an internal sound card, both of which I've used in the past, and maybe help you understand a little bit more about what an audio interface is from the perspective of a PC user and gamer rather than from the point of view of a home studio recording person. So if you're looking for a home studio audio review of these devices then this video isn't going to help you very much. This is more aimed at people who use PCs for audio, gaming, movies, music and maybe are looking for another solution as an alternative to the onboard sound on their motherboard. I'm going to be showing you two audio interfaces, both from the Focusrite Scarlet range. Um, I initially bought the Solo, which um, I'll show you briefly later in the video, um, but ended up landing on the 2i2 version because it had some additional functionality that I thought would be really useful for me and has proved to be the case. So I exchanged my Solo and paid sort of the upgrade difference to get to the 2i2. Um, there are many audio interfaces out there with a variety or many varieties of inputs and outputs. Um, your choice kind of um, it will be influenced by what you aim to do. But in my case, I needed microphone in, I needed monitor and effectively speaker out, and I wanted independent control of the volume and output of my headphones. So that's why I chose to move from the Solo to the 2i2, um, because it has an independent headphone volume amplifier and, and volume control. And in fact, if I was going to recommend one for people with the similar sort of needs to mine, which is gaming, maybe a bit of microphone use um, through gaming or potentially for things like what I'm doing now, recording videos and voice for videos. And even, I, I guess, if you've got um, some limited music requirements, recording instruments and other stuff, but even if you're just a gamer that's fed up with the whole crap associated with drivers, windows, software, audio software on windows, um, real tech drivers, then I would probably suggest that the 2i2 is probably going to tick all of the boxes that you want and costs around 140 pounds or dollars depending on where you are in the world. So first let's have a quick look at the Solo and then we'll have a look afterwards at the 2i2 and I'll explain the differences and the reasons why I decided to upgrade myself. Um, as I've said it's basically just an external sound card with uh, mic inputs and speaker and headphone outputs. It comes in a very nice solid metal box. It has um, The Solo has a USB cable connection in and it has phono leads out so that you can take those to a, an amplifier, speakers. Um, and um, one of the things that's interesting about the 2i2 is it actually has the same outputs on the back but with slightly different connectors so something to watch out for. There's the gain control for your microphone and the 48 volt power, su power supply if you're using phantom power. A guitar in, um, your main monitor or speaker volume out but as you'll notice it doesn't have an independent volume control for the headphones. So let's switch now and have a look at the 2i2 and um, discuss why that might be valuable. As you can see it's really just the Solo's older brother with an extra input on the front. The far left is the microphone with the independent gain control. Um, next to it is an audio interface input for another device. Um, a, an on off button for the 48 volt power supply to the microphone. An independent headphone control. Independent control of your speakers or the monitor output on the back. All in a very solid metal case and well constructed. On the back you've got your USB connector that goes to your computer. Stick to the cable provided by the way. I think you know you can encounter problems with third party cables on this device. And also the two outputs from that will go to your speakers controlled by the large monitor knob which is basically your speaker volume control the way that I have it set up. And that's basically it. Not very complicated. 
something else you might want to consider doing because you're not going to be using the onboard sound in your motherboard is going into the BIOS of your computer um, and disabling the onboard audio on your motherboard if you're using the onboard audio. I don't think this is strictly necessary. I have used my Focusrite without doing this, but I just thought for the avoidance of any doubt, I'd just disable it. It's one less thing for Windows to get confused about anyway. When you plug the USB cable into your PC, it's detected as a USB device. Uh, reported as a Focusrite USB audio. Um, Peers and Device Manager as the same, Focusrite USB audio. You can download and install the drivers for the Scarlett 2i2 from the Focusrite website and I'll leave a link in the show notes. That's what I've done. The, all the driver really does is enable you to change the sample rate and buffer size. It supports up to 192 kilohertz. Personally, I just keep it at 44100, and I haven't fiddled with any other settings, and I've had no problems in terms of compatibility, so that's probably a pretty good place to start. Just make sure you've selected it as your main output and input default device in Windows. You may have all manner of other audio devices on your computer and on your peripherals without even knowing it, so make sure that they're selected that way. Here on the desktop you can see I have my headphones connected. Um, the condenser microphone on my gaming headset is actually connected through this adapter which I can't pull out. Here's the kind of splitter and the headphones themselves are basically audio headphones. They're Philips X2s which I love very much and um, a third party condenser boom mic that connects into it uh, via a two and a half inch audio plug. On the back there are the speaker outs. Um, here's my headphone volume control. So I can raise and lower the volume of my headphones anytime I like. Same with the speakers. There's the speakers volume so I can have them both on, neither on, one on or whatever. That's how I switch on and off my microphone using the 48 volt supply to the mic. Um, and that's the gain control of the microphone. I don't happen to use the other line input but uh, if I take up the guitar, maybe I will in the future, who knows. That's essentially how I use it on the desktop. So all of my audio, sound, speaker, headphones and microphone control options are done basically with the hardware on my desk. As I've said before, just make sure if you need an adapter of any kind that you've done your research. This is the um, XLR adapter that I use to connect my conventional three and a half millimeter um, plug on my condenser microphone into the XLR socket on the front of the Focusrite. That's the obviously the mic socket from the, uh, the boom mic and um, it goes into one side of the adapter and the adapter fits into the XLR socket as I showed you earlier. It's a Rode VXLR Plus. Uh, an additional expense but obviously in my opinion one that's worth it. A word of warning, connecting your condenser mic with an adapter through the XLR socket like this will fit but will not work. So you need an adapter like the one I just showed you. So let's finish off with a quick summary and a few bullet points about audio interfaces. They're basically just fancy external USB sound cards with additional capability for audio and sound. They have an external DAC built into them, so they're also like an external DAC. You just plug them in and use them. Make sure you look at your inputs and outputs. Watch out for things like XLR connectors if you need adapters. Works like any sound card on a PC for games, movies and audio, but doesn't have all the fancy digital processing and software processing. And as I mentioned already, sometimes putting a DAC outside your PC can improve the sound quality. On the positive side, You've got independent inputs and outputs, independent volume controls, independent DAC, headphone amplifier, microphone stages. Set it up and forget it on your PC. Use the interface to control your sound with all the expansion options and inputs and outputs I've showed you in the video. On the negative side, it is an additional cost. They start at anywhere up for of £50 for a decent one, a budget one. Take care with adapters and inputs and outputs and obviously 
you don't get the bells and whistles that you might get with a gaming specialized piece of equipment if you like that kind of thing I don't like the software and digital audio enhancement or changing I like my sound pure and clear um, but it may be that you value those things and if you do that's fine I showed you the Focusrite Solo and the Focusrite 2i2 both very well regarded devices and certainly I found them very impressive in terms of uh, functionality build quality construction and performance but there are many other audio interface interfaces cheaper and more expensive with different options for inputs and outputs um, you know maybe I've got you thinking a little bit about what you know might work well for you and it might be different to me but uh, if that's the you know what the videos achieved then I'll be very happy about that personally I think um, as an enhanced audio input and output option for almost any PC user that places a high priority on sound they are a great option and I'm really pleased that I've um, found that option and implemented it in the way that I have if you've got any questions or comments or seen any more mistakes in the video then feel free to comment and let me know and thanks for watching